So, continuing straight on, um, here's, here's the, the uh, equivalent r theta phi in uh, spherical polar coordinates uh, for the y component of the angular momentum operator, so L hat, right? And it, it, works out, it works out to be this. And you'll have something similar for the z component of the angular momentum operator, L hat, okay? And the z component is particularly simple. Uh, it's just you know, minus i h bar d, d b d phi. It's much easier than uh, the other two. Now, I set up the camera angle in such a way that probably you can still see this. Uh, that's the L, uh, the X component of the angular momentum L hat. So, uh, uh, I, hope, I hope you can see both this and L Y and L Z. Right? Now, uh, moving on. Um, define now, and you may ask why. Uh, well, somebody noticed that it was true and that it worked, so it was interesting. But um, take uh, so in in um, classical mechanics, the equivalent the equivalent of this operator would be the square of the total angular momentum. I think in classically. Okay, so again, a bit using the correspondence principle, you may have something equivalent in quantum mechanics. Uh, define, that's where I've got three bars here, so you're just defining it, but you're motivated to do this, to, you know, to define it this way, by analogy with uh, what's happening in classical mechanics. In classical mechanics, if you take the square of the absolute value of the angular momentum, uh, now remember angular momentum is a vector, uh, so uh, taking the absolute value of it, that becomes then a scalar, and you square it, so you get like big L squared. And uh, big L squared would be the, um, the, angular moment, the x component of the classical angular momentum squared plus the y component of the angular momentum uh, squared plus the z component of the angular momentum squared. So this, this and you're without the hats, uh, that would be true for classical mechanics. So, uh, if you do something similar in quantum mechanics, uh, you add the hats and these then become operators. So, uh, your L, your LX hat, or the X component of L hat, would be, would be this, okay? So, squaring it means you apply this operator twice. So, for LY, you, you would be applying this operator twice. So you'd be applying this to the same thing times psi, you know, whatever it is the operator operates on, you know, your wave, your wave function, uh, your eigenfunction, presumably. Okay? So similarly for z, so uh, um, the z component of L hat squared would be this squared, right? Now add them all up. Um, now, I've asked you, you know, to do all this for homework, um, and you know, as usual, just relatively straightforward uh, derivations, you know, you know, reading between the lines, or well, actually writing between the lines, I, I tend to ask you to do. Um, you know, so, uh, that's assuming that you have a knowledge of vector calculus, right? So, uh, you know, calc Calculate these terms. You know, where do they come from? Uh, and if you square the things and add up these three squared operators, you know, applied twice each time, uh, you you'll end up getting this. So I'm asking you to do that for homework. Uh, so you're getting a relatively complex term. So uh, you can probably anticipate that uh, when it, when the time comes. So we're, we're, at the moment, we're just talking about operators. We're trying to find what, 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 what's an appropriate quantum mechanical operator for the context of angular momentum. Okay? Later, you know, once we've got the operators, we will uh, use them to in the eigen equations, the, operate, the angular momentum eigen equations.
So uh, this is rather complicated, so probably uh, the, the eigen equations we will get will also be rather complicated, right? That's to be expected. You know, just give them the look of the look of this, right? In fact, uh, interestingly, uh, this all this stuff inside the square brackets here um, is in fact uh, the angular part, you know, the theta and phi part of uh, this term, r squared del squared. So if you if you uh, calculated del squared. Uh, in uh, Cartesian coordinates, del squared is just uh, d squared dx squared, let's say psi, plus uh, d squared dy squared psi, plus d squared dz squared psi. Right? So if you then calculate all those d squared dx squared, etc., uh, in terms of r theta and phi, in terms of the polar coordinates, you'll get you'll get uh, the, the r part of it, you'll get this. Sorry, the, the angular part, the theta phi part, you'll get, you'll get this. Now, I mean, that's just toughs the for interest. It's not, it's not really essential. Okay, so um, now next step. So we found uh, in terms of uh, the angles, the, uh, the, the, the polar angles, theta and phi, we have found expressions for the three angular momentum component operators. So L X hat, L Y hat, L Z hat, right? And all three of them uh, uh, depend on. Um, they're all functions, if you like, of. Well, that's a bit. That's confusing. They all depend on the two polar angles theta and phi. Right? The L Z depends on phi. The L Y depends on theta and phi. The LZ, if you can see, it also depends on theta and phi. Okay? So, so we now have three operators. LX hat, LY hat, LZ hat. Question. Do they commute? Right? Those three. What happens if they do? What happens if they don't? Now, we've sort of been guessing a bit at, at what the uh, quantum mechanical an angular um, momentum operators should be, right? So, okay, now we, we have uh, suggestions. Uh, this, this, and this. Question, do they commute? Uh, so what? If they do commute, what does that mean? Well, from, I uh, did this at length in the previous chapter, if uh, two observables, like for example here, the x component of the angular momentum, or the y component of the angular momentum, they're two observables, uh, if they commute, um, that means they are compatible, right? And if they're compatible, that means you can measure both of them to infinite accuracy simultaneously. Now, what's what's the situation when it comes to angular momentum operators? The, the, the LX hat, LY hat, LZ hat. Do they commute? Answer? No. They do not commute. And therefore, you cannot measure any pair of them, of those three, LX, LY, LZ. Take any pair of those two, any two of those three. They, uh, they will not commute. So you cannot measure any pair of them to infinite accuracy, accuracy simultaneously. Just a minute, I think I need to blow my nose. The air conditioner chuffs out dust sometimes, I think. I'm <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, so I've just stated, just told you, thrown it at you that the any two of those operators do not commute. So let's now actually prove that to be the case. All right. So uh, commute. What does that mean? And it, if if two observables or the operators corresponding to two observables. Uh, if they commute, that, that means, uh, in more concrete terms, it means the commutator of those two operators is zero. Right? So, uh, so we'll we'll form the commutator. Here it is in the square brackets, you know, the usual uh, a hat comma b hat form. Well, in this case, uh, that a hat, the observable will be the x component of the angular momentum hat. 
and the wave component of the angular momentum hat. And we're forming the commutator of these two. Well, what is the commutator? Sorry, what is the operator corresponding to L, Lx? Well, here it is here, written out again. Uh, so that's Lx. And here, oh, here. <laughs> Uh, jumping back and forth a bit. In this sense, uh, it's easier, I suppose. It's easier just to, in this in this instance, uh, to use the Cartesian coordinate system. So, yeah, wh whichever is more convenient. In this case, it's more convenient using x, y, z rather than r theta phi. Okay. So this is L x. That's L y. And given the definition of the commutator, so this should be L y times L x. Right. So. Uh, Work that out. Uh, I should put hard work again. So it's it's a bit tedious, uh, fairly straightforward, but a bit tedious. You know, actually calculate what this comes out. It's just it's just high school calculus. I mean, these these uh, they'll just be differentials, right? Uh, d in this case d b d z, and this would be d b d x and d b d z and, and so on. Right? D b d y. Okay, so uh, do you know, do all the calculus, and then uh, my little stool. Uh, so you get you get this, and uh, it's written in this form because uh, this here is L Z. That's that's the form for LZ, the Z component of the L operator. And this is the, uh, the commutator for P's, P's, you know, the Z component of momentum and Z. So this is the commutator of PZ and Z here. Right? But uh, from the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, this is uh, minus IH, is that right? 